Hello and welcome to this Max Pulse training video. I'm going to talk to you about what comes in the box, how to set the machine up, and how to use the software to do a test. First of all, let's talk about what's in the box. You're going to find the Max Pulse device itself, which you can see right here, is solid state electronics, very sturdy and reliable. You're also going to have the finger attachment, which is good. you're going to use to take your readings from your patients. A USB cord, which you will use to attach your Max Pulse device to your laptop, and the power cord, which is for the Max Pulse device itself. You'll also be provided with a laptop, and this laptop already has the software installed in order to use the Max Pulse device. You will not need to do anything except connect everything, start the laptop, and you can start doing tests. Lastly, you will find an instructional booklet which we have included. This is from Long Life Cardio and will give you information that you can use as a quick reference for the future. <clears throat> Let's talk now about setting up the machine. Let's start by attaching the power cord, which you can see here is in two parts. And we're simply going to plug in to the rear of the machine like so. <clears throat> Your finger probe attaches like this. Note the uh, cut in the top of the attachment is upwards and it simply slips in. The last part of the device that you need to attach is your USB cable. This part into the rear of the Max Pulse. And this end into the USB attachment of the laptop provided. This is the power cord for the laptop. We're not going to use it right now because it's going to come to you fully charged. Once you have your Max Pulse device connected, take a note that the power switch is turned on. You flick it upwards and you'll see a green light. Also make sure that your laptop is switched on. When you switch on your laptop, you'll notice a blue light appears in the USB, indicating that the USB is connecting the laptop and the Max Pulse. We're going to wait a moment for the laptop to boot up. I want to mention one last thing that you'll find in the box. Uh, this USB drive is going to give you a copy of your Max Pulse software that you can load onto any computer that you so desire. This is compatible with Windows computers and you should put this in a safe place in case you ever need to reload the software. So when you first open your Max Pulse software, this is what you'll see. This first option allows you to perform the one minute arterial health test. The second option allows you to perform the three minute stress test. The stress test is done using heart rate variability and it's important to note that when you do a stress test the machine will automatically also perform an arterial test. So if you would like to do both tests on your patients go ahead and use the stress measurement. At the end of the three minutes, you will have a report for both tests. The setup option allows you to make some edits in the setup. You can change the language from English to several other languages. The heart rate variability test can run from three minutes to five minutes. This allows you to change the machine if you're using it in an Asian environment. You can also put your username and telephone number into this software. And this allows you to exit the program. Let's go ahead and look at taking an arterial test. This is the one minute test. The first thing that you're going to see is the patient page. You will see here a number of different patients have already been entered into this software. And we're going to go ahead and enter another patient. So the first thing to do is select male or female. Type the person's name. And date of birth. All patients need to have an ID number, so we're just going to put an ID number in there. If you have a patient record number or some kind of number already associated with your patients, we recommend you use that. So now that this patient has been entered, I want to show you the 
page where we're going to do the actual test. And as you can see, the person's name and gender is showing at the top of the page. So we're going to go ahead and place the finger probe on the patient's finger and start the test. During your test, don't move or talk. So during this one minute test, you will see that there's a few seconds are taken for the machine to get a steady reading. Your screening is starting. And the screening starts. It's important during this test that the patient doesn't move or talk. screening is completed. And that completes the test and it brings up the report page. Now the report page is different to the actual report. This page allows you to take a look at what's on the screen. By hitting the print button, the software will automatically send a copy to whatever your default Windows printer is. On this computer, the default is a PDF printer and it allows you to go ahead and print the report and instead of printing in this instance it's going to save to PDF. When you receive your laptop you should go ahead and set the printer for whichever printer you prefer. So we're going to create a uh, PDF so that we can take a look at that in a minute and see what this looks like. Let's talk briefly about what you're seeing on the screen here. The first thing that you're seeing is the PTG report which shows the arterial pulse wave. The second one is the accelerated PTG. This is the mathematically interpreted arterial pulse wave, which helps the software to accurately interpret the state of the arteries. And in the aging vascular health section, you have seven different categories, and you can see what percentage of heartbeats fell into each category. So the next thing you'll notice on this screen is wave type. In this instance, the patient is listed as wave type 2. What that means is that that is the wave type where the highest percentage of their heartbeats fell. Now because heartbeats can be a tiny bit different each time, often you'll see a distribution of wave type. A patient might be 60% type 2, and 40% type 3. Another patient might be 99% type 2 and 1% type 3. So it's important to look down into the aging vascular health section and take a look at the distribution. Is the distribution leaning downwards or is the distribution perhaps even upwards? You might have a very good type 2 who has 40% of their heartbeats as type 1. And you might have a very poor type 2, where they have 40% of their heartbeats at type 3. Also, as patients improve, you will see a change in the distribution before you necessarily see a change in the type. The next part down, you'll see eccentric constriction, EC. You'll see arterial elasticity, AE. And you'll see remaining blood volume, RBV. These values will dis be discussed more in a later tutorial where we will be talking about interpretation of the results. The other thing that's important to know is that on this screen, you have the option to select earlier tests if you wanted to view them. This drop-down menu will show all prior tests and the date and time at which they were taken. Clicking on the next button will take us to the graph page. Here we're going to see a graphic representation of the last five tests. And if the patient is improving, you'll see these numbers coming upwards. And if the patient is declining, you will see those graphs going down. Now, once the patient has had more than five tests, you may want to use these buttons to scroll backwards and forwards to look at the values on the graph earlier in time. 
The next button is going to take us now to the heart rate variability graph page. The heart rate variability graph page is identical in that it shows the last five tests or the most recent five tests and it is going to graph the numbers from point to point. Now this patient that we're demonstrating with has not had a heart rate variability test yet and so this is not propagated. But when it does propagate you'll see the numbers falling into these bars here and lines running between each of the numbers. This value, the 74 mean heart rate, has propagated from the arterial stiffness test. Again, you have the option to move forward and backward in time using these arrows. Let us return to the start page and discuss one more aspect of using the software. Let's say we would like to do a second test on Mr. Joe Doe. And perhaps there are hundreds of patients now listed here, and we need to search for Joe Doe's record before we do a second test. So the first thing we can do is search by first name, typing John Doe, and as you can see, only patients with first name John are now showing. We can also search by date of birth. You can use just the month, or the month and the day, or if you prefer, month, day, and year. Now, it is also possible if you have a system where patients have numbers and you're using those numbers in the system to simply type the patient number and have the patient show up. So when you do a second test with the same patient, you need to find the original record, highlight it, and then move forward using the next button. What this does is it will add the new test to your patient record and to the graphs that you've seen earlier in this tutorial. We're now ready to perform a second test on patient Joe Doe. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial which is primarily focused on setting up the equipment and using the software. A second tutorial is available that is going to teach you how to interpret the results and it's going to take a closer look at the heart rate variability test and the arterial test, what those results mean, the printed reports, how to access them, and what those mean as well.